station Houston on two for Chris Wynn convenient PO requests an additional voice check through the mic. And Chris, we're not hearing you in MCC. Uh, we are apparently getting it through to PAO, just stand by. Chris, PAO is working calm. Reconfig, I'll call you if we're ready for another check. Houston and SpaceX Endeavor in 6.5, Lyle cartridge is sealed and installed. SpaceX copies. Station Houston on two for Chris. We wanted you to confirm that the mic is in channel one. It needs to be in channel one. A thought here is that it could have been bumped over to two. Chris, we see you trying. We're still not hearing you in MCC. We're working on it. And Chris, uh, nothing in MCC. We see you trying. Uh, the word here is that as long as that is in channel one, uh, any problems past that point are on our end, so we're looking into it. We'll be right back to you. Station Houston, we're ready for another voice check through the mic. Station Houston, we have you loud and clear through the mic. Thank you. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop in uh, seven decimal one. SpaceX here. Okay, Anna, in uh, seven decimal one, it appears that the uh, ABV Inner Bravo is open as well as the PPRV ISO valve. I copy that ABV Inner Bravo appears to be open as well as PPRV ISO valve.
Just and go ahead Dragon and cycle up uh, to close if you're good with that call. Yes, we are good with that call and appreciate the status. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just tuning in, hatches were open at 12.02 p.m. Central Time. We are moments away from Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley entering the International Space Station. Again, this is Mission Control Houston, moments away from Bob and Doug entering the International Space Station. Shortly after they enter, we will conduct a welcome ceremony. There will be uh, VIPs here in Mission Control Houston, Ficker 1. Looks like they're all closed visually now. We are uh, in 8 decimal 3 for both SpaceX and Houston. Dragon arrival configuration is complete. SpaceX copies all valves appear closed visually now and arrival configuration complete. Excellent to hear. Houston copies. And with that endeavor, welcome to the International Space Station. Please come aboard. Never copies with pleasure. We'll be there in a second. We have Bob Bankin from SpaceX Demo 2 mission entering the International Space Station. Followed by Doug Hurley. And Station Houston, we see you, and it, it's a great-looking photograph. Uh, so thanks for that. Stand by one. We'll call you when we're, we're ready for the event in the next few seconds. Got a whole bunch of very uh, happy and grateful people making their way into MCC right now. Demo 2 crew now aboard the International Space Station. They entered at 12.22 p.m. Central Time. The station at the time was 262 statute miles over Turkmenistan. Crew all gathered in front of the cameras at the Node 2 forward end of the International Space Station. Just behind them is the hatchway to the Crew Dragon on its Demo 2 mission. We're standing by for a welcome ceremony. We'll have VIPs here in Mission Control Houston ready to greet the crew.
And station, we're just about ready. Stand by. All right, station, it's Houston on Space to Ground 2. Confirm that you are ready for the event. Houston, this station, we are ready for the event. Copy that. And, sir, Administrator Bridenstine, welcome to MCC. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the NASA Administrator. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear, sir. Welcome to the space station. Thank you, Chris. It's good to see you. And welcome to Bob and Doug. I, uh, I will tell you, the whole world saw this mission, and we are so, so proud of everything you have done for our country and, in fact, to inspire the world. We sure appreciate that, sir. It's uh, obviously been our honor to be just a small part of this. Uh, we have to give credit to SpaceX, the commercial crew program, and of course, NASA. It's great to get the United States back in the uh, crewed launch business, and uh, we're just really glad to be on board this uh, magnificent complex. Well, we have some uh, some VIPs with us here, and I'm, I'm sure they have some questions that they'd like to ask you, but uh, I have one of my own before I turn it over. And I just wanted to, to find out if you guys got any sleep on your way up there the last, uh, I'd say, I get 19 hours. Did you guys get any sleep? Yeah, I think a lot of folks in Hawthorne were asking the same question, sir, but uh, we did get probably a good seven hours or so opportunity for sleep and uh i did succeed at sleep and i dug it as well so uh the first night is always a little bit of a challenge but uh, the dragon was a, a slick vehicle and uh we had good airflow and so we had a excellent excellent evening and uh just excited to be back uh in low earth orbit again amazing well <clears throat> one of the people that uh, that is here with us today is um Senator Ted Cruz, and of course he's a huge advocate of America's space program, and he's been, uh, you know, somebody who has helped us so much as we transition from one administration to the next administration. And the reason missions like this can have success is because of continuity of purpose. Um, and Senator Ted Cruz was a leader on a bill called the American, uh, uh, the NASA Transition Authorization Act. And um, because of that, uh, we have had a lot of political support, and we're very grateful for his leadership. Senator Cruz, would you like to say a few words? Well, congratulations, gentlemen. The eyes of the world are upon you, and everyone is proud of you. All of the America is watching you, and today and yesterday represent big, big days. Uh, we're looking at a decade since we've had American astronauts launched on an American ship from American soil. And I can tell you I sat with my wife and kids in our living room watching on TV yesterday, and I suspect we did what just about everyone watching did, including both of you, which is held our breath as it took off. And we're glad to see you've landed safely. We're glad to see you've docked. Uh, and, and so let me ask you, that Dragon is, is, is an amazing vehicle. How does she handle? It uh, flew just like it was supposed to. It was, uh, we had a couple opportunities to uh, take it out for a spin, so to speak, uh, once uh, after we got into orbit last night, and again uh, today about uh, 20 minutes before we docked. And... Uh, my compliments to the folks back at uh, Hawthorne and SpaceX for uh, how well it flew. It uh, is exactly like the simulator, and uh, we couldn't be uh, happier about the performance of the vehicle. What do you guys hope to accomplish in your time on the International Space Station? Well, while we're on board the space station, of course, uh, with the new spacecraft, we do hope to put her through her paces, and so the good ship Endeavor is going to get a lot of a checkout over the next uh, week or two here. 
and hopefully we'll be able to uh, declare her operational and Doug and I will be able to take some burden off of uh, Chris and his crewmates, Ivan and Anatoly, so that uh, we can keep the space station operating at its uh, peak possibilities. So we're looking forward to contributing any way that we can and, uh, like I said, trying to keep space station as productive as possible. As a country, we're in the midst of a tough week. We're seeing protests. We're seeing a lot of anger. We're seeing violence. And I have to say this launch and y'all's docking is, is, is a powerful inspiration of what we can do when we come together, of the power of unity, uh, the power of ingenuity. And, and, and so I guess the last question I would ask you is, is, since you have the opportunity to address, in particular, all the young people in America, uh, what would you tell them in terms of what we can do when we can come together? You know, that's a great question. Nine years ago, uh, just about exactly nine years ago, we docked with Atlantis uh, on STS-135, the last flight of the space shuttle program, a 30-year program. And folks at SpaceX, folks at NASA, the commercial crew program put their heads together and worked diligently year after year, making sacrifices, working hard, and then nine years later, American launch capability was restored, and this is just one, one effort that we can show for the ages in this dark time that we've had over the past several months uh, to kind of inspire, especially the young people in the United States, to, to reach for these lofty goals and work hard and look what you can accomplish. Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Thank you, Thank Senator you, Cruz. We have another very special guest here that represents the Johnson Space Center. Uh, and, of course, it's my, my good friend from the House of Representatives, Dr. Brian Babin. And I want to be clear, he also was a big part of the NASA Transition Authorization Act, which gave us the continuity of purpose to make this uh, happen today. So, uh, gentlemen, here is Dr. Brian Babin from the state of Texas. Thank you. So great to be with you guys. It, uh, I was at the launch yesterday. I just want to say a, a huge congratulations. And, uh, you know, there was a thunderstorm that blew in about 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so before uh, liftoff. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, in doubt there for a minute, but it was an, an, just an enormous achievement. I just want to say thank you for you guys. Uh, really appreciate uh, what you're doing for America and uh, the crew that's already been up there, Chris, and your uh, your two fellow Russians. Uh, what a what, to give you a great big thank you as well. I have a son who is a Navy SEAL, and I want to thank you for your service there too, Chris. And uh, also, uh, I would like to just see what what uh, what. I know you've said that the, that the, uh, the 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 craft, the Dragon, handled uh, very well. But I want to see how how it compares uh, with uh, with the space shuttle. If one of you would address that, I would appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. It certainly has been a, a long endeavor for for us and our our nameship uh, namesake spacecraft. We're uh, proud to have her on board the International Space Station after all that the teams around the country and across America have done to, to get us here today. Uh, as far as a comparison with the uh, space shuttle, uh, both Doug and I took a few minutes uh, while we were accomplishing the approach and docking to, in our spare time, talk a little bit about it. We were surprised a little bit at uh, how smooth things were off the pad. The space shuttle is a, a pretty rough ride uh, heading into orbit with the solid rocket boosters. And our expectation was, as we continued with the flight into second stage, that things would uh, basically get a lot smoother than the space shuttle did. But uh, uh, Dragon was uh, huffing and puffing all the way into orbit, and uh, we were definitely driving or riding a dragon all the way up. And so uh, it was not quite the same ride, the smooth ride as the space shuttle was uh, up to Miko. A little bit less G's, 
but a, a little bit more uh, alive is probably the best way I would describe it. Anything else, Doug? No. Sounds good. Bob, what is Miko? Sorry, I have to apologize for uh, actually using the term uh, Miko. It's a little bit confusing between the space shuttle and the Dragon vehicle. So it's a main engine cutoff is uh, what Miko stands for. Those happened at different times in flight for the uh, two vehicles. For the space shuttle, that was when you were all the way in orbit. For Dragon, that was just uh, a little bit after two minutes. And then we had the single engine cutoff for second stage uh, when we achieved orbit. So that time under the single engine under Dragon uh, with one engine was uh, more of an experience than the, the shuttle was uh, for that six and a half minutes or so that we were under that uh, under that second stage motor. Well, I would just like to say, uh, in, in fact, Doug, did you have something you wanted to add there? I, I met your mother and father uh, yesterday, Doug, and uh, great, uh, great folks. They're very, very proud of their son. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, they en enjoyed the uh, launch. I know uh, for parents, uh, it can probably be pretty nerve-wracking for them to experience uh, a launch. This was their uh, third, so uh, I'm glad uh, everything went okay, and hopefully it was a good show. We haven't uh, obviously heard or seen any video yet, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, seeing the launch replayed sometime. I can assure you that it was a great show. Uh, it was one of the one of the uh, treats of uh, of my lifetime. I will have to say, and many many other folks that were sitting there looking all across the, the country uh, and, and e even the world. And I can tell you, as, as Senator Cruz said, we've gone through some really really rough times over the last few days, and to have uh, that successful launch, uh, you know, the the public private partnership between NASA and SpaceX, and you guys being so well-trained uh, and having it go off without a hitch was a tremendous blessing for our country. And uh, I can't tell you how many uh, emails and communications I've gotten from people that uh, or, who were so uh, disturbed by what was, what's been going on transpiring around the country to have uh, the great news uh, and the wonderful uh, liftoff and everything going without a hitch. So I just want to say God bless both of you. Thank you so very much. Bless the rest of you folks up there as well. We thank our Russian partners. And uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, we are uh, y'all are all in our prayers, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing you, you, you successfully complete your mission and uh, back on safely on Earth. God bless. Thank you very much. Yeah, and just so you guys are aware, uh, the show was, in fact, spectacular. Um, the ratings on NASA TV beat everyone else, not just some of them. It beat all of them, and that includes <laughs> yeah. just, just, just so everybody is aware, the whole world saw this. Um, it trended number one on Twitter. It, it was uh, the, the, the number one thing talked about on social media in general. Um, this, was, this was an amazing moment. Um, and it represents a transition in how we do space flight from the United States of America. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate rockets and capsules the way we used to. We're going to partner with commercial industry for access to low Earth orbit. Um, and those partnerships are going to enable our providers to get customers that are not NASA and drive down our costs. And we're going to have numerous providers that are competing on cost and innovation and safety. And we're going to have more access to low Earth orbit than ever before. And this business model, now that it's been proven on, on uh, commercial resupply of the International Space Station, now commercial crew to the International Space Station, this model is going to apply. And I know Senator Cruz has this near and dear to him when we go to the moon. And of course, when we go to the moon, it's going to be done um, because of the great people here at the Johnson Space Center and so many other centers across the United States of America. But when we go to the moon, we're going to land on the surface of the moon with commercial landers. Um, and of course, we're very proud of 
Uh, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program being managed right here out of the Johnson Space Center as well, so that we can take small payloads to the surface of the moon. And all of this is leading up to an amazing day uh, where we have humans living and working for long periods of time on the surface of the moon, but doing it with a purpose. And that purpose, of course, is to go to Mars. Um, humanity is going to explore more and be able to go further than ever before because of the public-private partnerships. Um, we all know <laughs> that if the government is creating the demand and the government is creating the supply, we will always be limited. But when we have partners that are interested in exploring commercially and, and doing the things that are necessary um, you know, to, to get capital investment, um, then we're all going to end up better. So I want to just say the whole world saw this. This is a new era in human space flight, and we are so grateful for the service of not just our two astronauts that embarked on this mission, but the 100,000-plus people that participate in, it, uh, in this mission, uh, everything from the suppliers to the main contractors um, to the NASA team, the SpaceX team. Uh, what an amazing day um, for, for our country and, in fact, for the world. I'm going to turn it over for a second uh, to my deputy, Jim Moorhard, um, who's been a great deputy at NASA. Gentlemen, congratulations. You know, Jim's mentioned going to the moon. And yesterday and today, one, you've inspired the Artemis generation, which is our next generation. And that's what this is about. It's really bringing the children that we've got and our grandchildren forward so they'll be the ones that are going into deep space. This is the dawn of a new era, and we just thank you for being at the beginning of it. Thank you so much. Uh, it was absolutely our pleasure, uh, but it's just a huge team effort across the board from SpaceX to NASA that uh, made this all happen. We were just the lucky guys that got to fly the rocket uh, yesterday. I have a, a question for Chris Cassidy. Um, you know, our, our crew here uh, decided to, to, to be about three days late. Um, you got to work them overtime, I presume, now to get them caught up on all the activities that they missed out on. Any plans for them? Well, the, the day they missed out on was a good one for them to skip. It was Saturday house cleaning, and uh, and I, but I took care of it for them. We'll we'll catch up next next weekend. Uh, but in all seriousness, we've we've got a few things to take care of tonight. Make sure we're all safe, and we know the plan in case something bad happens. Uh, and then we're looking forward to some operational stuff later in the month. Maybe we'll get outside and do some spacewalks. Uh, and our efforts in those in these coming weeks. We'll, we'll be in that effort. So we're, we're all super excited to have two more crewmates to the Expedition 63 uh, team. Awesome. And, of course, uh, here in Houston, this is the home of the astronaut office, and the, the Johnson Space Center is led by Mark Geyer. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark for a few comments. Thank you, Jim. Hey, it's great to see all of you there. Good to see you, Bob and Doug. I know we, we talked a few days ago. You look a little taller. Uh, then I remember you, and uh, but I also want to thank I also want to thank Anatoly and Iman uh, uh, and of course Chris for what you guys have been doing uh, since you all arrived. And I know there's been a ton to do, and you've been really busy, and I appreciate that. So I also like this visual of the, our international partnership. We have had a tremendous partnership with uh, Roscosmos, and we will continue to do so. Um, and uh, but I do. It is nice to see crew arrive from this side of the space station. So that was pretty cool. Uh, after nine years, uh, I did have one question for Chris. Though, what might you do to ensure that Bob and Doug stay longer? Do you have any strategy there? Well, we'll slow down uh, the rate of uh, which I'm eating food, and maybe we can uh, stretch out our, our our consumables a little bit. But uh, uh, that's a great question. We'll have to come up with some conniving scheme here in the next few days. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Look forward to greeting the, the three of you eventually back in Ellington uh, after your work is complete. Thank you. And, of course, Mark Geyer has an amazing deputy, uh, Vanessa Weish, if you'd like to uh, come and say a few words. 
Thank you, Jim. Hi, guys. You look really good. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of everybody here, we just want to thank you. Uh, it was an amazing launch, and um, we, we love seeing the docking. You guys all look really good. Uh, just thank you for all that you're doing, and we can't wait for you to, um, to return, but not too soon. Station wants you to get a lot of work done, so looking forward to all of that. But thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Vanessa. We appreciate that. All right, we also have with, with us Steve Jerzyk, who is the Associate Administrator for the agency. Uh, for people who don't know what that is, that, of course, is the Chief Operating Officer of the agency. But he also ran the Flight Readiness Review for this mission. He did a, a really a, an amazing job, um, and, and I can't say enough about his leadership at the agency. Steve, if you'd like to say a few words, ask a few questions. Hey guys, it is just great to see you all on the station. I can't tell you how um, I was. I, I, I my adrenaline shut down uh, when you guys opened the hatch. I mean, I've just been on edge ever since ever, ever since yesterday, and the weather cleared. I can't tell you how great it's been to uh, to see you on the station. Um, it has been a team effort. Um, I felt like the last two years I've kind of been part of the team, uh, working through issues, you know. And it's been a heck of a year and a half with uh, you know demo one. And, uh, and the in-flight abort test and working through issues like parachutes and the, the escape system. And uh, I just could not be more proud of the team for, for getting to this point. Um, it's amazing. And, uh, and you obviously have been part of that. I really appreciate you all showing up in Washington, D.C. at our reviews. And because the last thing we do at those reviews is look at you all because you guys are the risk takers and make sure you're okay with where we are and where we're headed. So I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate your active participation in that. And uh, I could not be more, like I said, more proud of the team. And uh, congratulations. And it is awesome to see you guys on station. Well, thank you, sir. We're just uh, proud to be a part of the team that got to bring a space flight back to the Florida coast. I appreciated the comment earlier that it was nice to uh, see a vehicle come to the forward portion of the space station, but I'll tell you what, that's the only way Doug and I know how to do it. So uh, thanks to the team for uh, providing it to happen our way. We, uh, we appreciate that. Well, Bob and Doug, um, just, so, just so you're aware, I'm, I'm get being given the, the, the wrap signal. Doug, uh, Doug, did you have something to say before we wrap it up here? Oh, no, sir. Uh, we're just uh, happy to be here, and uh, Chris is going to put us to work, and uh, hopefully we will fit in and not mess too many things up. I have no doubt that you guys are going to do amazing work. Um, I just want you to know um, the, the president came to the launch and the vice president came to the launch. About half the cabinet was at the launch. We had members of Congress and members of the Senate from both sides of the aisle. Um, and this was uh, an amazing moment of, of, of unity for the nation. It was an amazing moment for the whole world uh, to, to look up uh, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and some other challenges. Uh, we were able to have this very, very special moment uh, where we could all look at the future and say that things are going to be brighter tomorrow than they are today. And you um, and the NASA team and the SpaceX team gave us that opportunity, and for that we are so, so grateful. I would also be remiss as the NASA administrator if I didn't promote what comes next. And, of course, this is the beginning. We are now launching to low Earth orbit again, but we will soon be going to the moon. We will be going to the moon sustainably with commercial partners and international partners. Uh, we're going to use the resources of the moon to learn how to live and work for long periods of time. Ultimately, we're going to take all of that knowledge and we're going to go to Mars. And, of course, this time when we go to the moon, we go with a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps that includes women, which is why we call the program Artemis, named after the twin sister of Apollo. And she, in Greek mythology, was the goddess of the moon. This is the beginning. There is so, so, so much more to come. And I'm glad that our representatives of the Johnson Space Center are here because we're going to be asking them to fund this project. <laughs> and, uh, and what an amazing day that you guys have, have given us. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you from not just me and the people here, 
but from the United States of America and people all around the world. Um, I'm more popular on Twitter than I've ever been, and it's because of you guys. Thank you. To the crew on the International Thank you to all Space of you. Station. Thank, thank you very much. Hey, Chris, we ask that you just hold your position for a few minutes. There's, a, of course, a, a number of photos we'd like to take. And then a quick note uh, for those down here in the room. To Senator Cruz, Congressman Babin, Administrator Bridenstine, Director uh, Geyer, and all of our distinguished visitors, thank you for your participation in today's historic event, and thank you for the leadership that has enabled it. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. That concludes our coverage of the SpaceX Demo-2 mission in conjunction with NASA. On behalf of all the teams that participated in this mission, from Hawthorne to Houston to Mission Control to the Kennedy Space Center, this is Mission Control Houston.